Hello and welcome to another episode of Men Are So Smart, The Fen Treasure. Today we'll be answering some emails that we receive. Um, we always try to give you a couple of different ways that you can get a hold of us. Yep. Uh, we give you our email addresses. If you'd like to make a comment and you'd like to be a little more private, or you're just not big on commenting on a video and you want to send them out, either way, yep. we enjoy them. And so today, uh, we will be sharing a couple of the emails that we received that you may not get to see um, uh, in the comment section. And, oh, by the way, I'm Lou Gallagher. Oh, I'm Corvette Ronnie. Yeah, and, uh, and this is Men Are So Smart. I got this one, Ronnie, from um, a gentleman by the name of Mike. Okay. I think I'm just going to leave it as Mike, and he'll right. know who he is. I know who he is. He says, hi, Lou and Ronnie. The thing I like most about your Fen episodes is the fact that you are not searchers. Right. I think that makes your take on the Chase unique because all of the other Chase-related YouTube tube content providers I know of are either current or former searchers. You guys don't have that kind of baggage weighing you down. Nope. Your show is a much-needed bridge between those of us who think we have a chance of finding the chest someday and those who think we are crazy for thinking we even have a chance of finding the chest someday. You are the most unbiased, open-minded presenters on this topic that I have seen. Thank you. Uh, understand that no one can be a serious searcher without applying their own biases to their approach to the chase. That's a word that keeps coming up a lot, bias. Yep. Everyone has biases, by the way. Mm-hmm. Forrest Fenn could use an alias. Get the, This is a hypothetical situation. This is pretty good. I, I did like this part. Forrest Fenn could use an alias to anonymously send you to the correct solution to his poem, including a map with directions and the exact coordinates to the chest's hiding spot. You could lay all of that out on your next show, and I promise you, all of us searchers would mock, ridicule, and make fun of it as the dumbest solve ever, right. because if we didn't think of it ourselves, right. it's obviously so totally wrong that it's just stupid. <laughs> and some would go on to say it was stupid of you to share it. That's how searcher biases work. I believe the greatest asset for any searcher is to have an objective, open mind. Unfortunately, that seems to be the most elusive asset for any searcher to recognize, much less apply to the chase and their solves, because we are so heavily invested in our own biases. Your Men Are So Smart Fan episodes go a long way to bring some much-needed, open-minded, objective, unbiased logic and reason to the chase and simply going to be very hard pill to swallow for many researchers. I know you guys can take the heat, Keep up the great work, and I'll keep waiting for that bell to ding. I love it. Uh, P.S. I still have my fingers crossed that Fen will grant you guys an interview. I know it will be awesome, and when he does. And that's from Lurker Mike. He's on the forums. So, you know, Ronnie, that's a uh, that ow, that's something that we discuss all the time, you and I. Yeah. Why do people feel compelled? And I guess it. I, I guess it breaks down that you're, you're spending so much of your life trying to locate this treasure through research that it's kind of like a bad marriage and a divorce. You have all these great memories, <laughs> but you don't think about the bad ones. <laughs> you only think about the good ones. Yep. And so, uh, you know, I, I really don't get it. I don't think that you have to be that way. The biases are a little bit ridiculous as it is. And you know, in our last video, Ronnie, we talked about um, owning up to uh, what your solve is. And you keep it to yourself. And why do people feel compelled to put other people down? All right. I, I, it's not necessary. Don't do it. Uh, we don't do it on our show, okay? Well, and the one thing that, and again, he's basically said that Forrest Fenn himself could send his solve you know, including the explanation for every clue right. and where it leads to, and people would say, whatever. Right. Roll their eyes and say, that's it's crazy. But, yeah, and that's the thing about this. These clues are, are so vague that you could tie them to almost any region in the world. Right. There's enough places, um, you know, and, and I think that that's probably... One of the biggest things going against finding this ever is that it is. It's it's just 
a little bit too vague, and I get it. He didn't want the first person to read the book to go out there and find the, the treasure. So I, I understand completely why it has to be that way. But people getting mad at other people because they try to, you know, they put forth their solve. Uh, well, that can't be right because mine is right. Right, yeah. Well, we get that a lot. <laughs> right. Yeah, we get several solves per week sent at to us. At least. I have another one and I'm ready to unleash. And we'll talk. I tell you what, Ryan, let's move into... These two, uh, yeah. These are two emails. One's very short, uh, from from the same person. Uh, says frog I, guys. Frog guys says uh, I think you should do a show on nothing but finding things in the pictures drawn in the thrill of the chase, and also what you can find with a magnifying glass in the book. Uh, please refer to me as Frog Eyes. All right, Frog Eyes. Okay. Uh, his next one no, says... I think um, I wrote some questions to him. There. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then you wrote back, where are you watching from? How long have you been watching? Uh, without commenting, commenting, and how did you find us? Why do you watch? What prompted you to contact us? Uh, he says, I found your show on YouTube because I watch all the different videos that have anything to do with the treasure. I don't chat. I've left a few voicemails on or texts for Gypsy's Kiss, but I don't think they like my answers. <laughs> and then he laughs out loud. So I stopped that. I wasn't being rude, but Forrest said to study the poem and the book, and this is key here, until you figure it out and not go boots on the ground a hundred times. Right. I think that is a huge key. Uh, I've only been watching you guys for a month or so. What's your problem? <laughs> I filter through a lot of videos trying to learn from others' mistakes, but also seeing if I can hear or find that one little hint or clue that might help me. I'm under the radar, but Forrest knows who I am. I appreciate the offer, but I'm so close to finding it that I am exclusive to the documentary right now. There are confirmers, and I've found a few, enough to put me in the right town and county now I'm narrowing it down, my constant studies to a mile or less. Uh, it's hard, but I find something new almost every day. That's my goal to keep chipping away at it. I think everyone will really like uh, what it's all about when they find out. Thanks for I get responding. that a lot too, Ronnie. Yep. Oh, people are going to be so surprised when they hear how I solved this. Right. Now, hold on. Here's the thing. This gentleman, uh, Frog Eyes, is from Louisville, Kentucky. And um, he was interviewed recently by a, a magazine, InsiderLouisville.com, in the lifestyle section. And um, they tell his story. And one of the things that he says is that he knows, Forrest Fan knows of him. And I get that a lot, too. Right. And a lot of times people will say, well, I sent him my solve and he didn't get back to me. Right. So I know that means I'm right. <laughs> Are you serious? You really, that's the conclusion that you're going to draw from him not getting back to you? Come on. So this guy says he knows that he's very close. Uh, he studies maps. He reads books on decoding mysteries and such. Um, but he says he's figured out that Fenn hides clues in ordinary words and Dotson feels that over the years Fenn has dropped more clues not just in subsequent books but while also doing innumerable interviews because Frog Eyes has paid close attention to how Fenn uses his words not just to what he says on the surface he believes he's narrowed down the location of the treasure to within a mile. Uh, and then he goes on to say, I've listened to him. Uh, that's why I think I'm so close. Um, by that, he means he figures that Fenn hides clues in his words. Yeah. And he does. Fenn gives, he still does. He still gives interviews. Uh, so he may be inadvertently dropping clues. I know that when we, when we interview bad guys, they're, they say things that they don't want to say. It's inadvertent. They can't help it. 
and is it they're trying to mix it in with uh, with their story, but with those stories of false. There's a couple little tidbits of real clues in there also. I got a kick out of how Gypsy's Kiss is not a fan of his. <laughs> yeah, I've I don't know I've 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 only watched just a couple minutes of their show. Um, they do I think they do get a lot of people that comment or respond while they're they, they do kind of a live show it looks like yeah a long one very long it's over an hour which is the reason i can't i can't get into it um this uh, insider also goes to say that uh, dotson's tale is a bit more personal than most backstory is the treasure is that fenn decided to place many of the valuables he'd collected over the course of his life into an ancient chest after he was diagnosed with cancer. Mm. Uh, his plan was to drop the clues, hide the treasure, and then take his own life before the cancer can do it for him. And uh, I know I was just... God, I was, I was watching something the other day, and they were talking about a... I think it was like a World War II general that was saying there's nothing as invigorating... Uh, I'm not sure if that was his word exactly is having the enemy shoot at you and miss to really focus and really understand what life is all about. Yeah. You know, had that person uh, been another degree, one direction or another, might not be the same story. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, summer is coming, and if Frog Eyes has indeed cracked fence code, his wait is about to be over. If not, he vows to go back to the drawing board. That's, you know, again, no one is any closer than anyone else. Right. You have a solve. It's, that's what it is. It's your solve, and you hope that it's it. But so many have gone before him, Ronnie, and been wrong. He says, I'm pretty confident I'm going to find it. But if I don't, I'll keep studying and try to go again before fall comes. I'm positive that this is, and this is the best thing about this article, a seasonal search. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Now, I'm going to put the link to the story so that you can uh, peruse it yourself. It'll be down below in the description. Um, everybody's looking for the treasure. This guy, I guess, just got some good publicity from his local magazine or television show or whatever the heck it is. Uh, and we wish him luck. Yeah, we don't we don't wish anyone ill will. Uh, honestly, honestly. I, I want somebody to find this this year. Yeah, I, I, we would love that. Yep. Honestly, um, and, and you know, some people say, "Well, what about what will happen?" You know, if you don't have any more Finn episodes, you can do. We'll move on. We do. The Finn is only one day a week for us. <laughs> right. We we do many episodes, not Finn. Yeah. So. Uh, before we go, Ronnie, four people I want to say a special shout out to, Donnie Lee. Donnie, thank you for subscribing. Matisse Gautier has subscribed to our Men Are So Smart oh. channel. Tarman Oki has subscribed, and so has Jim Siri. So thank you to all your people, all you people. Thank you for becoming subscribers of our channel. We hope that you'll do the same thing. It's very easy to do, and it's absolutely free. Just don't say, hey, Siri. Uh, no, don't. When you're, oh, when you're calling him. <laughs> don't get her started. <laughs> she and I are not getting along. We're not even speaking right now. She's got a Siri. bit of a toot. She does. Yeah. Uh, so you can subscribe too. Just click the subscribe button. Also the bell. When you do, you get notifications. Each time a new show comes out, those shows are Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And they are they come out at 6 a.m. on the east Co on the west coast and 9 a.m. on the east coast. And occasionally there's a little Easter egg on Sundays. Uh huh. Mass. Yeah. Sunday morning mass. Yep. So be sure to check us out on Sunday mornings right here on our channel. So you got that to look forward to. Which is nice. Which is nice. It is. All right. So that's going to do it. Keep your comments coming. Keep your emails coming. Uh, you've seen our email addresses go across the screen. Thank you today for watching. I'm Lou Gallagher. Corvette Ronnie. And this has been another fan episode of Men Are So Smart.